Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. In a previous video, I demonstrated the brand new Constraint Components tool in Fusion. And basically, this is an additional option to build assemblies that is in addition to the joints tool that we're used to. So the way I demonstrated that tool is that I built this table here for my table saw. And I brought in some caster wheels from the McMaster car catalog that's built into Fusion. And then I used the constraint components tool to position the caster wheels. And I showed several different ways that you can use the constraint components tool, just showing different features of the tool. But there was one method that I used that I wanted to come back and highlight and show you why you want to avoid that option. Not the full option, but just a part of it and I'll explain that in a second. So the particular method I used was that I created a sketch. So basically I created a sketch on the caster wheel here and I projected the mounting holes and then copied that sketch and then pasted it to the bottom here of the table. And in doing that I wanted to just quickly move along with the video so in constraining it what I did is I used the fix constraint so the problem with that is let me just untoggle here so we can see it so you can see that these lines are all blue and they're not fully constrained so in order to just keep the tutorial moving I said I'm gonna take a shortcut and just do this and do fix constraint but I should have clarified that if you want your model to be fully parametric then you want to avoid this and I'll show you why so I'll pick up at this point I'm gonna click finish sketch let me bring in my components here and then let's go ahead and grab our constraint component tool and we'll say let's constrain some mounting holes here so what I'll do is I'll click on this edge of that bottom edge of that mounting hole there and I'm gonna say line that up with this circle here and click OK just to demonstrate that's not gonna be enough because what you have now is like a revolute constraint so we need to constrain one more a feature on this to be able to lock it. So I'm going to go back to that feature on my timeline and then click the plus sign. And here I'm just going to select the bottom edge of the caster wheel and then click on the circle. It moved it in place so it's hard to see. But you can see it grays out the component once you make that selection and then I'll click on that green circle of that sketch and I'll click OK. And now this has been fully constrained so I'm unable to move it but I want to show you the problem here if I bring in my parameters table here so I made this table fully parametric and we can see that the sketch here on the left is the one that I fixed so the one I just did is right here this wheel and let's change some of these parameters so let's say let's take the length and let's say I'll change it from 30 to 48 you can see the problem here so this wheel moved with the table it kept those relationships but this caster wheel stays put and doesn't change or update with the table dimensions let's try changing the width here we'll say 27 to let's bring that down to 24 and you can see now the table got shorter but the wheel didn't budge this one is still aligned with the table so it is updating and the problem with that is because this sketch here, the, when I fix constrained it in place, it doesn't move. It stays locked in. So as the design changes around it, I told that sketch, you're staying put right here. And I didn't give it any relationship to the edges. So I just wanted to highlight that even though I was just demonstrating one part which was that constraint components tool I wanted to come back and just clarify that um, if you were to do this route it's a perfectly legit way to go you just don't want to use that fixed constraint you want to actually properly constrain it and set relationships to your model all right let's just fix this so that it does go ahead and update with the model so the way I would do that is let me just delete that constraint feature and we go the way I would constrain this so it updates with the table is I would simply go to my constraint component and select it can do edges or faces you can check out that previous video if you want to see more detail of how to use this tool but I'm just gonna click on the face here of that caster wheel click on the face here of that table 
You know what, let's not do that first. Let's actually first get a constraint so that I find it easier to set this face to the top face of the table. If you want to remove a constraint, just click on the X here. So I'm going to reset that by clicking on the top face of the caster wheel and that face of the table. And I'm clicking OK just to show you how now it's constrained to that surface. And now we're going to add a few more by going back to the timeline here. We'll just do the rest of these two together. Click on the plus sign. I'm going to grab this face of the caster wheel, that face of the table. Click plus sign. And we'll do one more, which is going to be this other face of the caster wheel. Now I'll constrain that to this face of the table. Click OK. And now let's test those parameters. So first I want to make sure that this isn't moving, which is not. And then bring in that parameters table here. And then we can bring this length back to 30. And you can see that they both updated fine. Let's change that length, let's say 36. And they both update. Just wanted to come back and revisit this just to clarify that one issue there. But you can see how powerful this tool is. Just a really quick way to come in and build assemblies with your components. So I hope that clarifies it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I will be back shortly with a new tutorial. Thanks for watching and a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you're looking to improve your fusion design skills, it's critical that you become comfortable with the use of sketch constraints, which will dramatically speed up your workflow. I've created a free constraints cheat sheet you can download. Check out the link below. I've also included links to my fusion video courses and my Patreon page if you'd like to support my channel. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.